Hello gentlemen, welcome to section 6.2 entitled Characteristics of Chemical Changes or Chemical Change. We're first going to look at our investigate from this section which was a series of reactions between different aqueous solutions. So you had seven aqueous solutions, you reacted them one to one with each other and observed what type of chemical changes manifested from that. So some characteristics of these chemical reactions are you could have had a cloudy colorful precipitate being made. You could have had slight heat being released. It was hard to observe because they were drops on paper and we couldn't touch them. Also, you could have seen a color change with no precipitate being formed. Now, precipitate being formed often was denoted by a cloudy look. If it was cloudy, that usually means that there's some solid particles in those little droplets that you guys have mixed together. So that was usually your precipitate. And lastly, you could have seen uh, gas formation in the presence of bubbles being present into your mixtures. But in some reactions, it appeared as though no reaction happened at all. For example, if you had you know, two clear solutions, clear and clear, and you reacted them together, you got out a clear solution. It looked like nothing happened in some cases. Well. Let's take, for example, here. We have sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. I'll react them together, and we'll see what happens. No bubbles, no precipitate, no cloudiness. Nothing really seems to happen. But does that mean nothing happened? No. There are some reactions where it appears as though nothing really happens. In this case, sodium hydroxide is a base. Hydrochloric acid, we know, is an acid. When we have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide reacting, we get a special relationship. So, in acid-base reactions, the appearance of the reactants is often very similar to the appearance of the product. You have two clear solutions reacting, you create a clear product. So, in order to navigate around that, we use something called an indicator. So therefore, an indicator is used. The indicator is a substance that changes color when exposed to either an acid or a base. We saw this in section one. In section one, you, we had our different stations around the room, our 10 stations. One of the stations, you reacted phenolphthalein, which is an indicator, with sodium hydroxide, which you just identified as a base. When you did that, we made a pinkish purple product. If you don't remember that, this is it again. We have our indicator solution and we had our sodium hydroxide. Two clear things, looks like nothing's going to happen. We're reacting together, it turns pinkish purple. You saw this in the laboratory when we did it the first time. So, that happens because phenolphthalein is an indicator. It will change the color of the solution when it comes into contact with an acid or a base. In this case, when it comes in contact with a base, it turns purple. So you would put phenolphthalein in an acid, and then when that acid reacts with the base, it turns purple. So you know and that reaction actually did occur. Another indicator that we use, common indicators, one is litmus paper, and the other is phenol red. We'll talk about phenol red next class. Litmus paper, we used it in chapter two, I believe. Litmus paper, little, little, piece, little pieces of paper like so. We use them when we're talking about whether a solution was a metal oxide or a non-metal oxide, and if that solution was acidic or basic. We dip these into the different solutions and they turn a degree of colors. These colors indicate a certain pH level which will give us an like, indication of whether it is acidic or basic. That's our lesson for today. Gentlemen, take notes on this. Enjoy.